for tuning in, everybody. In this episode, there, you know, what I'll say is when I went down to Dallas, the hideaway was just amazing. Um, it's really a gem in Dallas. If you're in Dallas playing poker, you really owe it to yourself to check out the hideaway. Now, I know you might be going to like the poker house in Dallas and their tables are cool because they have wireless chargers, which was pretty cool. But in all seriousness, um, the hideaway, uh, just watching these videos, the action was crazy. And if you guys are, are watching these and you're like, oh, I'm not sure if I want to be at Professor and Donkfish's meetup games, let me tell you, the best games I have played probably uh, in the last two years uh, have been a combination of our meetup games and a few select others. But it seems like every single one of our meetup games, the action is just crazy. So you're going to see like a $1,000 bet, all in, pre-flop, five-way action. Again, I'm not even in the hand, but I just wanted to show it because one of the things that I think is undervalued or underrated is when we do the small blind jackpot, which again, you put $5 or $10 on the button. When we were in Texas, we were putting $10 on the button, and I actually like it at $10. It forces a couple of things. One, if you're a really tight player and all you're doing is just posting the blinds, one and two, one and two, one and two, it forces you to put in an extra five or $10 each round. Two, even if you're a tight player, like the guy I was next to, Sticky Mike, in the hideaway, who was a great player, uh, you know, it was one of those things where there'd be like 150 or 180 dollars on the button and he's sitting there with 500 dollars in front of him and as a good player he knows i'm getting an extra 180 dollar incentive it opens up people's ranges so my recommendation to you guys if you guys are playing at a home game that seems a little bit tight or if you're playing at a club that seems a little bit tight see if you can start the small blind jackpot let's see if we can get that going i'm just telling you right now it is lit it really is. It it changes the action. So you're going to see, again, a couple times where there's pots over, you know, raises over a thousand dollars pre-flop because there's a hundred or two hundred dollars on the button. Just absolutely crazy. But in any case, anytime I start editing a video, I don't know where I'm going with it. But looking back at this, um, yeah, I think uh, next time I go to Texas, I might spend two or three days at the hideaway. Uh, the action was just absolutely amazing. I'm going to put their contact information down, uh, down below. They do run a lot of specials where you can play all day for like 35 bucks. They run veteran specials. They run ladies specials as well. So uh, they're, you know, a smaller group. They're not like TCH. It's just one owner operator. Uh, but, you know, it gives you that home game feel. And the place was packed. All the tables were full. Uh, also, one of the things that they do is they do a mixed game, which is really good, like a dealer's choice mixed game. So you have all sorts of options you can pick from. So we have a meetup game coming up April 1st and April 2nd. Uh, our meetup game is in Chicago. It's hosted by Chicago Charity Group. I'm going to click all their information down below, but the uh, game is going to get fired off at 2 o'clock on Saturday, April 1st, and it's going to run until 1 in the morning. And then on Sunday, it gets kicked off, I believe, at 1 o'clock and goes until midnight. Wayne and I will be there for that entire time. We're going to be doing round by round, four card PLO, five card big O, and then we're also going to include the small blind jackpot. We're going to start it off either at $5 or $10. Uh, at $10, it really does bring in the action. And it's $100 to $500 buy-in, and then 75% match the stack. So uh, after a couple hours, you should be able to buy in for quite a bit if you really want to. So join us uh, at Chicago Charity Group, April 1st and April 2nd. Also, as you guys know, I'm with Dancing With Our Stars, which is a charity fundraiser for hospice. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put the QR code right here. Uh, for any vote, votes are $10, 100% of it goes to charity, but every person that votes, you do get entered into win a $5,000 boudoir session from my wife, and I'm gonna put her info down below as well as far as her website and stuff like that because I don't talk about that that much but um yeah thank you guys for tuning in I, I I hope you guys enjoy this video because it's uh it's really action-packed and I wasn't sure this is just the first half of the hideaway so the next video will probably be the second half of the hideaway but there's a guy we played with 
by the name of Kumar, who just was on fire. The guy just kept putting out black chips, like stacks of black chips. He had a roller coaster ride. And I tell you why, I had a roller coaster ride, but it was also some of the most fun I've had in a really long time. So uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy. And as always, play smart and run like a god. So as you heard right there, this is one of the reasons why I love Texas. It is $980 pre-flop, and we've got four-way action, and we have some dead money in there. So we're going to go ahead and fast forward a little bit while the dealer figures it out and show you what all happens with audio. We haven't even seen a flop yet. Uh, I don't yet. know what to do here. I mean, am I supposed to gamble? We're going to sweat uh, this one. I okay. I had one more suit out of gamble. What is it, 980 pre what, what am I supposed to do? I get some balls I, can uh, I, can get in there. I can't discuss wait, wait, that until all the action's done. He's got 980 yeah. all the way. He's still in the hand, bro. Are you full? You full? I pulled it. I already pulled it. Yeah, I don't know. Can you see it? Yeah, I see it. If I'm double suited, I think. Uh, if you have a suited ace, you definitely run with it, but I might run with that because there's so much action. You, there's a 40% chance that it's just going to be high, and that, that is an incredibly strong high hand. If you had a suited ace, I would probably... Let me know in the comments down below, would you guys have gone all in with ace, king, queen, jack, three in this crazy game? I'm curious. Now we're just going to fast forward it because the dealer's figuring things out. One thing I will say, the dealers across all of Texas are all amazing. They're so used to dealing such a variety of games that they don't even hesitate when the player tells them that there's new stuff going on. They just roll with it. These dealers are great. So we got ace, deuce, four, five, five. I like that hand, too. You almost have a no bust down low. I like it. This is why I love made up games. You can buy my hand for 150 bucks. That hand will win. Queen high spades? Oh, no, never mind. Queen high spades. Oh, I mean, it's probably going to come like 9, 10 jack. Watch. Window card. Oh, five. Wow, that's a super nutted hand. And spades? Oh, ace. Ace four. Ace three and queens. Ace three and queens. And eight ten. That's right, folks. You saw it. Five, seven, eight, eight, ten. I paused it here for a minute because Kumar is the person who has five, seven, eight, eight, ten. Kumar has been dubbed the Honey Badger. If you don't know who the Honey Badger is, I'll put the link down below. Just watch it. It's one of the funniest videos you'll ever see today. You're welcome. Oh, wow. All right, all right, all right. Let's see what we got going on here. We have a $40 straddle going on on this big O hand. Now, you can see there's about $150 on the small blind jackpot. That does encourage some action. Let's see what we have that we got to work with here. As we peel back the cards, ooh, ace, three, five, seven, nine. Now, this is not a 3-3 three, three hand, but we are on the straddle, and we do have plenty of limpers. So, currently... There are five callers, so there's $240 in the pot. Now, when you do have a bunch of limpers and you have a suited ace and you have three to a wheel, you have two choices. You can play really conservative. You can check, which, why are you straddling for $40 in the first place, besides the fact that it's a meetup game and it's loosey-goosey and we're in Dallas, Texas, which has amazing action. Uh, or you can decide to pot. So I decide on potting it. Probably not a surprise to you guys that here it is, 
$40 straddle and there's five limpers. So I'm going to do a full pot size bet. I raised $240. Now, to say that the action at the hideaway was absolutely amazing is really an understatement. The action at the hideaway was absolutely to die for. Out of all the places we went to Texas, I think the hideaway might have been my favorite. So if you guys are playing at in Dallas, Texas, check out the hideaway. They're in Carrollton. Uh, they're about a 10 minute drive and they're tucked away in this little corner spot, but they've got a nice sign as you're driving by so you can spot them out. But it's a great place to check them out and play. They do a mixed game every single night uh, where dealer gets to call. So in any case, let's get back to the action here. I made it $240. It's on Sticky Mike. Sticky Mike decides to go all in. Now let's talk about this just for a minute. Sticky Mike goes all in for like $630 or $640. It reopens up the pot. The beauty of it reopening up the pot, especially since I have the Maniac image, is other players don't know if I'm just going to repop it. They don't know if I have pocket aces suited or whatever the case may be. We are somewhere in the neighborhood of $3,000 to $4,000 deep. There's one or two other people who have that amount on the table. And well, plenty of people who have $1,500 to $2,000. So we are very deep stacked. But I love this move by Sticky Mike. He has a decision to make whether he needs to run with it or he folds. He decides to run with it. I had a feeling somebody at the table was probably going to be ripping it all in with anywhere between $500 and $800, and we were basically uh, coin flipping. Now, on the flip side, it's only an extra $300 for me to call to win like $700, so I'm getting 3 to 1 on my money. So I snap call because everybody else folds. Let's see what the flop is. Queen Jack 10 with two spades. Oh no, the turn's a seven. Come on, spade. Come on, spade. River's a five. I turn over fives and sevens, and I say I've got two pair. And Sticky Mike. Oh, he turns over jacks and sevens. Nice hand, Sticky Mike. You deserve to win this. But in situations like this, again, when it's only like an extra $300 or $400 for you to call to uh, win a potential, you know, when you're getting three to one on your money, it's really a no-brainer, people. Just the card gods decided Sticky Mike was going to win this one, and he deserves it. He was getting beat up pretty good all night, so it's good that he wins this one. Let's see what we got here. It looks like there's a, a limp for 20. What did I limp with? Oh, my God. So we have a straddle and a double straddle. I decide to limp with middle position for $20. We have two people behind us who call. Let's see what happens here. What could I possibly be limping with? Ace, ace, jack, three. Did I forget my coffee before I played this game? What is going on here, people? I limped with pocket aces. That's right, people. I limped with pocket aces. Kumar, a.k.a. Honey Badger, decided to pot it. He decides to raise a full pot size bet, and I'm going to do the old elusive, something that you very rarely see in Pot Limit Omaha. I am going to limp re-raise that's right folks this is probably one of the worst plays in pot limit omaha for the most part but you know what i decided i was going to do it and i decided if kumar was going to repop it i was going to repop it with him now the reason why we nicknamed him honey badger is because kumar just don't care kumar does not care so i repop it to 450 dollars pre-flop that's right 450 pre-flop i have pocket aces with a suited ace they're not that bad uh, for aces. So my normal rule with aces is if you can't get more than 50% of your stack involved in the pot, then you really shouldn't be like trying to jam it all in. In this situation, after the 450, I'm still 1360 behind. So I did get about 25% of my stack in there. And Kumar has about the same amount. He's got about 1500 behind. So uh, in a situation like this, I'm okay with that because it is Kumar. So it's not very often I'm going to limp re-raise with aces. But again, I already told you about Kumar, a.k.a. Honey Badger. And he raised, and I saw this as a golden opportunity, just to squeeze a little bit, maybe get heads up. So I re-raise to 450 pre-flop, and we get two callers. We get both Honey Badger, and we get another pro. I can't remember what his name was, but he's from Dallas. Really good guy, watched all my videos, said he implemented everything and his bankroll went up and down, up and down, up and down, and now he implements some things and not others, which I appreciate his honesty and feedback. But let's see what happens on the flop here. As we're going to the three-way flop with $1,350 in the pot, the flop, oh my God, it's a five-six queen with two hearts. Yeah, we're not going anywhere here, people. These are some of the biggest pots that I've won, and they're some of the biggest pots that I've lost with aces and a suit. 
So what ends up happening is Kumar just pots it. Well, you know what they say, always be careful what you shoot for. I mean, my goal was trying to get heads up with Kumar, not because I think that he's a bad player, but he is like Honey Badger. He just don't care. The chips just don't mean anything to him. And in all seriousness, they are just betting discs. They're not actual money until you get to the cashier cage. So I oblige with Kumar. I say, you know what? You're right. I wanted to get this situation heads up. You made it $1,400 on the flop. I'm obviously calling. I'm counting out my chips here. All in all, I'm going to have $1,360 behind is what I'm going to figure out. Now, I do the one thing that I normally don't do in a situation when I try to get it heads up against an individual. I ask him if he wants to run it once or twice, and Honey Badger says, let's go ahead and run it twice, which means he's probably on a draw too. Let's see what the run out is. We're all in for 1360. We decide to run it twice. I show aces with a heart. First run out looks like, oh, we get a heart on the river. Dealer tries killing the deck, and I tell the dealer, don't kill the deck, don't kill the deck. We're running it twice. After all, we agreed to run it twice. And the second run out, we got a black nine and a black 10. I'm like, I've got aces, and I've got hearts. And Honey Badger decides to show me what he has. He has seven, eight, nine. 10 so he has a straight we're gonna end up chopping this one for whatever reason every time i've been running it twice lately i win the first time lose the second time it's to lower variance and you know if i'm stuck in a game i'm less likely to run it twice if i'm ahead i'm more likely to run it twice that's just my own personal preference and i've talked about this in my videos before let me know what you guys think how often do you guys like running it twice and why do you like running it twice tell me what you say what, what you think in the comments below so here comes an interesting hand here. Now, this is of the four card variety. Again, we look down at ace, jack, five, nine with three spades. This isn't an amazing hand. It does have a suited ace in it, which is something that I like. And we are at the meetup game. So even though I straddled for 10, I'm going to juice it up to $60. Now, I know what some people are going to say. They're going to say, Professor, Professor, this is not a premium hand. It's just a suited ace. Not only that, but you're holding three spades in your hand. Those are very valid points. We are at the meetup game. It is loosey-goosey. I have the maniac image. Anytime I have a semi-decent hand, a.k.a. a suited ace, even if there's three in that suit, I'm probably going to end up raising it because I do have that maniac image. One of the advantages of having the maniac image is getting paid in interesting situations. So stay tuned for this one. So $60 pre-flop, we get... Looks like Sticky Mike is going to call, and I think we're going to end up getting four ways to the flop. So, yeah, we've got some action here in Dallas. Let's see what the flop comes out. All right, dealer's putting it out. Queen Jack 5 with two hearts. Now, in a position like this, you have one of two choices. You could play it passive, which I don't mind that argument, or you can play it the aggressive route, which is the way I prefer to play it. Now, that probably does not come as a surprise to you guys, but we flop bottom two pair. But here's a situation. The board has two hearts on there, and it's very draw heavy. Queen, jack, five. So anybody with like 9, 10, king, ace, king, 10, uh, just king, 10, any hearts, all of those things I need to charge for, right? Right. So you could either be passive and be like, well, we flop bottom two pair. We're just going to check and see what happens and give control of the pot to somebody else. Or you can do the less popular route and say, I flop bottom two pair, and there's a couple of callers. Uh, looks like we went six ways to the flop. I am going to say, do a go away bet and a feeler bet. I bet $160. It's about a half size pot bet. Now, it's important when you're doing these bets that you mix in your super nutted bets with the same type of drawing bets. So, for example, if I had a set of queens here, I'd still bet 160 If I had the nut heart draw, I would still bet 160 I have bottom two pair, I decide to still bet 160. Here's the beautiful thing about betting something like that and only ending up with one or two callers. You end up finding out that people are probably on a draw because that's what we got. We got two callers and the turn comes a six. Now the board is even more wet, more draw heavy. Now we're three ways to the turn. Now I'm going to dive into this hand just a little bit more than I normally do. And the reason why is because what is so strong on the board that they're just flat calling that they're not raising with? Let's take a moment and talk about that. They could easily have pocket queens and they're just trapping. Congrats to them. They could have pocket jacks and pocket fives, even though we are blocking that. Congrats to them. 
They could have queen jack, or they could have queen five, and that's possible as well. Chances are, though, when they flat, all they have is a draw. They probably have hearts, and the other one probably has a straight draw. So now at this point, I determine that bottom two pair in pot limit Omaha is not a hand that you usually want to rip it with, but I decide at this point in time, bottom two pair is probably good. After all, one of the players I am up against is Honey Badger, so I do a full pot size bet. I'm like, all right, I have to charge the absolute maximum for all draws here. Honey Badger is never going to fold a draw because Honey Badgers just don't care. So the first opponent, when I bet $850, full pot size bet, mucks it. The second opponent, a.k.a. Honey Badger, says, all right, let's go to the river, Josh. So here we go, onwards to the river. Let's see what that river is. Lo and behold, oh, it's a jack. Now all of a sudden we have to go from targeting draws to trying to get the most amount of value out of our hand. We don't have a super strong full house. I mean, if the guy did have fives, pocket fives, that's just a really sick cooler and a sick run out. If he turned a set of sixes, that's really sick. So now we have to say, instead of charging draws, we want to get value. What can we bet to get value from like ace queen, pocket aces, ace queen 10, you know, something that had top pair with a straight draw, maybe like the ace of hearts with the queen. I mean, there's $2,400 in the pot, so we need to really bet down in order to get some value. Now, if you're first starting off playing Pot Limit Omaha and you make your hand, this is where a lot of people make a mistake, where they'll just bet full pot size or they'll just go all in. In my situation, I know my opponent was on a draw, and now I'm hoping I can get a crying call out of a queen or pocket aces. So I bet a measly $300. I get snap called. I turn over Jack's full. And he says, we're good. So we're going to scoop it. And would, let me know what you guys think down below. What do you think about the $300 bet on the river? Was that a good bet? Could I have gotten more value? What do you think? Onward to the last hand of the vlog, of this current vlog. Let's see what we look down here. Now you can see there's, what, $60 on the button? Again, $10 small blind jackpot brings in a lot of action. Oh my, ace, deuce, four, jack, queen. Now this is a premium. We have a 3-3. Three, 3-3 three. Three, three refers to 3 to Broadway and 3 to a wheel. Anytime you have a 3-3 three, three hand, you really should be pushing the action. Let's talk about that just for a second. The reason why you should be pushing the action on a 3-3 three, three hand, especially even though we have four clubs, obviously we're not drawing the clubs, is the hands that you could be up against that you're behind are very few combinations. For example, if somebody has ace, king, deuce, you're going to be behind a little bit. If somebody has ace, king, deuce, three, you're going to be behind a little bit. But that's really the only hands that you're behind. Yes, you're going to be behind ace, ace, deuce, ace, ace, three, ace, ace, four. I understand all those things. But generally speaking, out of five cards, that's really hard for people to have those three card combinations. So when it gets to me, and lo and behold, I'm in the greatest position that's ever been played in the great game of Pot Limit Omaha or Big O, we are on the button. Let's talk about the button. Button, principal, favorite position, and we have a 3-3 hand. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and pot it. We pot it, and we end up getting a lot of callers. We're going to the flop. There, It's $120 pre-flop. We're going to get four callers. So four ways to the flop. Let's see what develops, people. And just so you know, we are, I don't know, probably like three, dollars $4,000 effective. There's a huge black stack that you can't see that is out there. And the flop come, wow, talk about flopping it, 8, 9, 10. Now, there's a few things to be concerned with. First of all, we did flop the nuts, yes, but... It is draw heavy. There are two spades out there. So in a situation like this, it doesn't mean that we're going to go absolutely nuts over this hand. Now, we are going to bet for value because we did flop the nuts, and we do have some redraws. I know what you're thinking. Redraws, Professor? Yeah. We can actually go runner, runner, you know, king X, like king jack. We can go runner, runner low, things of that nature. But I'm going to put in a little bit of a value bet of $200. Now, again, I'm not going to go crazy with this hand, not quite yet, but I am still going to bet it. Everybody ended up checking it to me. I am the maniac. I have the maniac image uh, with jack queen, with the stone cold nuts. Obviously, we're putting in a bet, but I don't need to do like a $400 bet at all. I can bet like half pot. Still get some values. I don't mind charging spades here because I also want to see what develops on the turn because keep in mind, in Big O, you have five cards instead of four, so there's a lot more runner-runner possibilities. So when I lead out and bet out about half pot size bet, you know, $200, 
we end up getting uh, not one, but we get two callers. So we're going three ways to the turn. Let's see what the turn brings. Oh my, the turn is a seven of clubs. Now in one essence, you might say, that doesn't change anything. In another essence, you might say, that changes everything. What do you mean, Professor? Well, now we do have the nut high, and we're drawing to the nut low. So if somebody does have jack queen, we have the possibility of quartering them. Lo and behold, first player checks, second player bets 500. I'm like, squeeze me? What? 500? So now I'm like thinking, if he bets 500, he probably has jack queen. He might have a redraw like jack queen king. Or he might have a redraw like jack queen with spades. But I have a redraw jack queen with a low. So when he bets 500, I'm like, you know what? I think in order to squeeze the other player out or to charge max for anybody else who's left in the hand or the person who bet 500 because they still have some money behind, I think right here I just need to make it like 2,000. I just need to rip it all in basically. And that's what I do. I make it effective uh, all in for all other players. Now, the person who ended up betting $500 actually has another $1,500 behind. The guy that is to my left two seats, I think he's got about $700 behind. So he goes in the tank for a little bit. He decides to muck it. My guess is he probably ended up having a set. And the other guy who has another $1,000 behind, well, he already put 500 in the middle. He is not going to go anywhere. He's definitely going to call. I'd be shocked if he put in 500 and mucked. He ends up calling, and we go to a run out, and bink, we hit a low, we hit a five. I turn over nut nut. He turns over jack queen with nut spades. So we were free rolling each other. This is just the good side of variance working on our side. So we end up scooping this one, or not scooping, getting three quarters of this one. Ends up being a nice size pot for us. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below what you guys like and didn't like about this video. And as always, everybody, play smart and run like a god.